Come on, play something. There's not much our poor family can do anyway, said someone at my mother-in-law's birthday party. Everyone there, her friends, my husband's friends, and our relatives, looked at me all at once. My mother-in-law, wanting to embarrass me, grinned and stared at me. I slowly put my fingers on the keyboard. My name is Noriko, and I'm a 36-year-old stay-at-home mom. I live with my husband Tom and our daughter Ha, who's in fifth grade. With a kind husband and a sweet daughter, I should be happy. But there's one problem, my relationship with Hannah. When my mother-in-law saw Hannah, she rushed over and hugged her tightly. Grandma, it's been so long, said Hannah. You've grown up and you look pretty again, Grandma. My mother-in-law happily chatted with Hannah, but as soon as she saw me nearby, she glared at me. What are you doing? Isn't it polite to offer tea or something? Or do you mean to tell me you can't even serve your mother-in-law? Grandma, what's up? Hannah asked, puzzled. Oh, uh, why don't you come with me to the mall, Hannah? They have a big buffet there. Really? I'd love to. Hannah said eagerly, but she glanced at me, looking unsure about leaving us alone. Her eyes darted, unsure of what to do. Go with Grandma, Hannah. Are you sure? I reassured her with a smile, and she looked relieved. Let's go, Grandma, she said happily, taking her grandmother's hand. With a smug look on her face, my mother-in-law whisked Hannah away to the mall. The issue here is that my relationship with my mother-in-law isn't good. When my husband's around, she acts kindly towards me, which makes me feel relieved. But when it's just me and her, she starts saying mean things. My son told me you only went to a junior college, right? She'd say, yes, I did. I replied slowly. You hesitated. I wonder why Tom chose you. What do you mean by that? Do you have a problem with me? Tom is highly educated, graduated from a top private university, and yet he chose you who was from a poorer background with just a junior college degree. I tolerate you because you're Tom's wife, but honestly, I wouldn't want to be around someone as poor as you. What's the point of having only a junior college degree? You lack education, money, and common sense. You need everything spoon-fed to you. That's why I dislike people with just a junior college education, she said with a cutting tone. Her words hurt me deeply. I'll try to be polite when others are around, but please keep your distance from me. I replied, stung by her unreasonable argument. Since then, when we're alone, she's been unkind to me. I've tried to ignore her insults, following my strategy of minimizing contact with her, as my mother-in-law suggested. But the real problem is my daughter, Hannah. She adores her grandchildren and visits us every three days. Most times she takes my daughter away from me, just like she's doing now. My heart ached as I watched my daughter anxiously ask me, Don't you and Grandma get along? We're okay, sweetheart, I replied, trying to hide my own hurt. But Grandma says you're mean to her, my daughter said. It's the other way around, I wanted to say, but I held back. Instead, I had just said, maybe we had a disagreement the other day. Mom, you have to make up with Grandma, Hannah insisted. You're right. We'll try to patch things up. I forced a smile at her directness, though inside it hurt. One day, my mother-in-law came over and said, Hannah told me you teach piano. Yes, I teach her. I'm teaching her on my father's old grand piano. It's a bit worn, but it's precious to me. I used to play my favorite psalms on it, and now I'm teaching my daughter, I explained. Mom, I want to learn too, Hannah chimed in. So she started learning piano from me? I'm not the best teacher, but her enthusiasm touched me. Teaching her became a special and fulfilling time for both of us, despite the challenges. While I pondered this, my mother-in-law's expression turned stern. Step aside, she said in a low voice. What? Step aside. But I've been teaching Hannah, I protested. Not anymore. I don't want someone like you, with your background, teaching her. Don't you care about Hannah's future? Shocked by her tone, I stammer. What's wrong? Do you want to argue? But she cut me off, saying, never mind. Let me put it in simple terms for you. I'm saying I'm a better teacher than you. Why? Because I graduated from a top music school. Unlike you from a lesser college, she asserted. What? Have you heard of TG University? I retorted. I swallowed hard as my mother-in-law boasted about her education. I graduated from a prestigious four-year university, unlike you, she bragged. I see, I didn't know it was TG University, I replied. TG University is top-notch, especially for music students. 
If my mother-in-law graduated from its piano department, she must be highly skilled. Even someone like you can understand that, right? You're not on the same level, she sneered, making my throat tighten. TG University truly is a light, as my mother-in-law claimed. It's clear that my daughter would benefit from learning from her. But it also means sacrificing more of my time with my daughter to my mother-in-law. She already takes up a lot of our time, and now she wants to take even more. That's something I can't allow. The time I spend teaching piano to my daughter is precious and irreplaceable, I asserted. Isn't that selfish of you? She sighed loudly, interrupting me. That's not what I meant. What do you mean then? You're standing here, a graduate of a prestigious teaching university, a top musician. Normally, people would pay for your teaching expertise. But out of kindness, an offering to teach for free. How can you reject that just because you want to teach? You're not even that skilled. Don't you dare speak to me like that. Fine, I'll play for you right now. I'll show you I have the ability to teach my daughter. Who wants to hear a poor woman like you play? Your playing will make our ears bleed. What can I do to prove myself to you? You don't even need to prove anything. You just need to follow my instructions. I've already spoken to Hannah. I couldn't believe what I was hearing. What had my mother-in-law told my daughter without involving me? I felt a surge of anxiety. I've already spoken to Hannah. I'll be teaching her piano from now on. I graduated from a renowned music academy and I'm better at piano than you. You agreed it would be best for her. Why are you being so selfish? I didn't expect you to oppose this so strongly. With my qualifications, it's only natural for me to take over. Did you never consider my opinion? You're incredibly stubborn. It's decided, so stop being selfish. With that, my mother-in-law swiftly left. Since then, she's been coming to our house daily to teach Hannah piano. I'm not even allowed in the room where they have lessons. During breaks, my mother-in-law always tells me, you don't understand. Hannah has a talent for music, and she needs proper education to develop it. With your limited qualifications, you're not capable of providing that. If you continue as her instructor, you'll ruin her talent. Understand? Yes. Well, that's settled then. You won't be bothering us anymore. Stay out of our way, got it? I fought back tears of frustration as my mother-in-law looked down at me, a pang of pain piercing my heart. I'm going to play piano with Hannah, my mother-in-law said cheerfully, then turned to Hannah. I had once pleaded with my husband to intervene, but he didn't see it as a big deal. What's wrong with her teaching Hannah piano? He asked dismissively. It's not just about teaching piano, it's about taking away quality time from me and Hannah. You're overreacting. I'm sure mom just wants to lend a hand. Why do you have to criticize her efforts to make your life easier? No, it's not helping. It's I'll talk to mom about it, okay. Please don't be so upset. But the truth is, she doesn't take me seriously. From the outside, it might seem like my mother-in-law is being helpful in raising my child. But in reality, she's like a devil trying to snatch my precious daughter away from me. No one understands the pain I feel. It's frustrating, but I have to do what's best for Hannah. I feel so frustrated that all I can do is try to talk myself out of it. I thought, but then the worst happened. Nicole, come here. I was summoned into the piano room, a place I hadn't been allowed to enter recently, and my eyes widened as I stepped inside. A piano. Oh, you recognize it. We just got a new one. My mother-in-law chuckled, gesturing towards a brand new piano beside her. Kelly, what's going on? Where's my father's piano? I got rid of it. You got rid of it? Yes, I got rid of it because it was falling apart. My mother-in-law replied casually, causing my heart to shatter. Why, that that was my father's piano, full of memories with him. I choked out. It doesn't matter to me. That old piano doesn't fit me, and Hannah. Oh no, 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 how could you? I hoped she was lying, so I questioned her. I called the contractor and had it taken away while you were out. She said without hesitation. You entered the house without permission. What do you mean, without permission? I always do that. There's a big difference between your presence and absence, isn't there? You can't just dispose of someone's property without permission. How could you do that? Shut up. I was being kind by getting rid of that old piano and buying a new one for you. I might regret it, but I don't deserve to be yelled at. She snapped, pushing me out of the room and slamming the door behind me. You clearly don't understand the importance of this piano. Don't even think about touching it without my permission. And you're not allowed in this room either. Right now, Hannah is practicing a song for my birthday party. 
People like you are disrupting her practice. I had reached my breaking point as the door slammed shut with a resounding thud. That night, I asked Hannah, Are you practicing a song for Grandma's birthday party? Yes, I'm practicing really hard. Please listen to me, Mom, she replied earnestly. Yes, of course, I'll listen. By the way, Hannah, I have a favor to ask you. I smiled at her, and she cheerfully replied, What is it? Then came the day of my mother-in-law's birthday party. Relatives, neighbors, and friends were all invited, along with some of my daughter's friends. It seemed like my mother-in-law was in a different mood this year. She had sent letters to many people a few days before, insisting that her granddaughter would play the piano for her birthday and she would love for them to come and listen. Her plan worked as the guests were mostly relatives, neighbors, and my mother-in-law's friends, along with some of my daughter's friends. I'm sure she had instructed my daughter to invite as many friends as possible. My mother-in-law smiled when my daughter brought a lot of friends, saying, So, the granddaughter is playing the piano for me, huh? I thought maybe it was a mistake to have my daughter practice piano for the party. But I kept quiet. I spent the morning busy making food and a cake for the party. My husband and daughter helped me, but my mother-in-law didn't want to pitch in at all. It was her birthday party, but I wish she appreciated my efforts, too. Nonetheless. I was glad to see so many people gathered. Once the preparations were done, my mother-in-law stood up in front of everyone and exclaimed, Thank you all for coming to celebrate with me. The party began with my mother-in-law's lively voice and exaggerated gestures, as if she were a stage performer. After enjoying the food and chatting for a while, my daughter stood up and moved in front of my mother-in-law. Happy birthday, Grandma. I have a present for Grandma. My daughter announced, then took a seat at the piano placed in the back of the room. Please listen, she said cheerfully before starting to play Twinkle, Twinkle, Little Star. The tune was sweet, and I could see smiles on everyone's faces, but it wasn't flawless. Clearly, her skills had declined. Anna could have played better. As I pondered this, the performance came to an end. My daughter smiled shyly at my mother-in-law, who praised her, saying, You did wonderfully. Thank you, Hannah. Then my mother-in-law turned to me, and now I have a request for you. Oh, what is it, Hannah? I want to hear you play, not the easy pieces, the difficult ones. Can you? For some reason, my mother-in-law seemed puzzled by my daughter's request. Her eyes darted around, but when she caught sight of me, she put on a sickening smile. Yes, you may play. But before I do, Nicole, didn't you say you were going to play a piece for me? My mother-in-law looked at me and said something like that. I had never promised such a thing, but I felt pressured. She was going to do it? What? I hadn't heard my mother play in a long time. Yes, Hannah. Your mother is going to give us a wonderful performance for Grandma. Wow, I'm looking forward to it, my mother-in-law said after seeing her granddaughter smile, then turned to me. It's my birthday, so I'll let you touch this piano. With that, she pushed me and made me sit down in front of the piano. The whole room was buzzing with excitement after Hannah's lovely performance and all eyes were on me, eagerly anticipating what I would play next. Well, there's not much a poor person like you can play anyway, right? My mother-in-law whispered in my ear so only I could hear. It was that she was daring me to embarrass myself in front of my daughter. Come on, Nicole, play for us. Everyone's curious to hear what you'll play, she mocked. Despite her taunts, I quietly replied, Okay. I slowly placed my fingertips on the keys, took a deep breath, tapped the keyboard once, and then began to play a piece with great energy. What? Was my mother-in-law's puzzled voice in the background as I carefully played the piece, making sure not to falter in my finger movements. The piece was Chopin's Etude Op. Ten No, one famously used as the opening song of the Anaheim Piano Forest. It's a very challenging piece for performers but it's one I've practiced extensively and become quite skilled at. There was no way I could fail. I flawlessly finished the piece, then stood before the stunned audience and gracefully bowed. Instantly, applause erupted from the crowd. Surrounded by eyes filled with emotion and excitement, and applause filled with admiration, I basked in a feeling I hadn't experienced in a long time. My mother-in-law, standing beside me, muttered, No way. When I asked her what was wrong, she huffed in response. It's nothing, she said firmly. I countered with a confident smile. You seem impressed. Where did you learn to play like that? My eyes conveyed a silent message. Despite growing up poor, I still managed to excel. 
My mother-in-law turned to Tom, asking, What? Nicole won an award for excellence in a junior piano concert when she was in high school. It's been a while since I've heard her play, but she's still amazing. Her performance was beautiful yet powerful. No, I'm not that great. There are plenty of people better than me. I quickly deflected, then turned back to my mother-in-law. You graduated from that famous music college, TG University, right? Yes, I did. Why do you ask? I'm quite curious. How do you teach piano to Hannah? What kind of music do you focus on? Well, that's not really relevant at the moment, is it? Why not? You graduated from a renowned music university and a teacher's college as a musician. Surely you have some input on her education, right? No, it's not necessary to worry about that. Just play something for me. What? Please play a piece of music I've always wanted to hear. Your wonderful performance. I would even ask my daughter to play it for me. My mother-in-law's eyes widened at my request. Yes, I only had one request for my daughter, to have her grandmother play. So, could you please ask Grandma to play for her birthday party too? That's all. But that's all it would take to complete my revenge. While I embarrassed myself in front of all my relatives by playing poorly, my mother-in-law would hide behind an excuse, claiming I was too ill to play. But I'm sorry, I can play just fine. Ah, I want to hear it too, my daughter agreed cheerfully. Grandma's fingers aren't feeling well, so she only lets me play simple pieces. Is that so, Hannah? How did you learn to play the piano from your grandmother? At first I played the songs she taught me, but they were all easy. So these days, I play while looking at the music sheets you gave me. Grandma always compliments me on how good I am. Do you get any advice from your grandmother? No, she always says she has nothing to teach me because I'm a genius, so I don't get any advice from her. I see. I got the point. I had thought that Hannah's piano skills were declining, but that was what it was all about. My mother-in-law had told me that she would teach my daughter the piano, but in reality, she didn't teach her much, and the whole time she was teaching her, my daughter was teaching herself. I want to hear my grandmother play, not the usual easy pieces, but the harder ones like my mother used to play for me. Grandma, I'm looking forward to it. Then let's listen to my grandma play together. Yes, that's what Grandma said. She plays the piano better than Mom. That's why I've always wanted to hear her play. I'm so happy for you. Today you'll finally get to hear your grandmother play. I'm so happy. Despite her smiling, my mother-in-law's face began to turn pale. What's wrong? Hannah wants to listen to your performance. No, no, it's I'm not feeling well today. She's waiting for you to play a simple nursery rhyme for her. Hannah is really looking forward to it. Yes, but I'm not. My mother-in-law started sweating, her eyes darting nervously at my words. What's wrong? You can't play. What? You can't play? After that performance? Come on, you graduated from TG University, right? You can play just as well as I can, no problem, right? I graduated from a teaching university, but my major was conducting. Even if you're studying conducting, piano is one of the subjects, right? I chose an instrument other than the piano. With my small hands, I'm limited in the pieces I can play. There's no way I can play as fluently as you. My mother-in-law's outburst caused a stir among the people around us, who started to wonder what was happening. You can't play the piano, huh? But weren't you proudly telling us that you were teaching your granddaughter to play? You said you played better than your daughter-in-law's poor piano, didn't you? What do you mean? The suspicious gazes around me turned towards her. It's not like that. Okay. I'm not, you guys, I... I do play the piano. Hey, Grandma. My daughter's eyes widened in genuine curiosity as she asked her grandmother a question. Can't you play the piano? Hannah, if you don't play the piano, why did you lie and say you do? No, Hannah. I didn't lie. It's true. When I asked her why she was always so kind to me but so strict with my mother, she told me it was because my mother mistreats her, and I thought that was true. What are you talking about, Hannah? Could it be that you're really tormenting my mother? My mother-in-law screams in sorrow at my daughter's words. No, it can't be, of course not. Nicole and I are good, aren't we, Nicole? No way. What are you talking about, Nicole? There is no way I can get along with someone who would throw away a piano given to me by my father, my most precious possession. What? My daughter tilted her head. She said that you said you didn't need it anymore so she threw it away and bought a new one. 
It was very precious that I got from my father. Even if I couldn't play it anymore, I wouldn't throw it away. Really? Then why did you throw it away, Grandma? Didn't you know that it was my mother's precious treasure? To her daughter's words, my mother-in-law just shook her head and said, No, 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 no. The conversation between us caused the guests to start fussing. My husband, sensing that the mood had deteriorated, asked the guests to leave, saying, Let's call it a night. He began to urge them to leave the room. Wait, it's really not true. There is a reason for this. There's a reason. What's the reason? She said you told her you didn't need it anymore. So she threw it away and bought a new one. But it was special, a gift from my dad. Even if I couldn't use it anymore, I wouldn't throw it away. Really? Then why did you throw it away, Grandma? Didn't you know it meant a lot to my mom? To her daughter's question, my mother-in-law just shook her head and kept saying, No, no, no. Our conversation upset the guests. My husband felt the tension and asked everyone to leave, saying, Let's end the night. He urged them to go. Wait, it's not what you think. There's a reason. What's the reason? That's enough, I said firmly, looking at my mother-in-law, who was muttering to herself. Please don't ruin my daughter's talent because of your own selfishness. My words seemed to hit her hard. She sank to her knees. After that day, she never visited our house again. She had made a scene at her own birthday party. No matter how much she might want to, she wouldn't be welcome at our place anymore. And it seemed her relatives and neighbors who were at the party were spreading rumors about her. Now she's being avoided by them. Still, she keeps insisting. It's not my fault. I was framed. That wicked wife set me up. She's going around the neighborhood saying it's not her fault, but nobody believes her. Honestly, it's just typical of her. Meanwhile, my daughter has been practicing piano with me, and she's improving a lot. Mom, I want to play a duet with you. Well, it might be tough until you improve a bit more on the piano. Then I'll practice loads and get even better than you. I'm sure you'll surpass me quickly, Hannah. And I'm going to be a pianist, a pianist, a pianist. And when I perform in front of lots of people, I'll say, I became a pianist because of my mom who taught me. She's much better at piano than I am, Hannah. So I'll practice a lot. I'll keep at it. Thank you, Mom. I'm really happy to have peaceful times with my daughter again.